Hello there. It's time for most things Kenobi. I prefer all things Kenobi, but I suppose that's not the Jedi way. As long as it's not all things Anakin. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Leanne. And I'm your host, Lauren. And this week is a two-part, it's the first part of a two-part series where we kind of loosely call it Get to Know Your Hosts. And this week, you're going to get to know Lauren because I'm interviewing Lauren for all of you. Now, (laughs) I have created a list of questions that she has not seen, she doesn't know anything about, (laughs) she has no prep time. No idea. (laughs) So it's going to be fun. I don't know what to expect. Yeah. And then she's going to do that for me, and then it'll be my turn to not know what to expect and answer all the questions. So (laughs) It's kind of fun because it could literally be anything. Like, we didn't put any parameters on this. You could ask me about celery for all i care because you know i have feelings about yes <laughs> we already know your your sordid past with celery so we'll keep it out of this one <laughs> i was gonna text you right what? before we started recording that i was eating a really delicious cheese <laughs> oh. <laughs> that i thought you might like <laughs> you know what's and hilarious I, yeah i i do have a food it could be a food related question oh funny. we'll see it's not it could be though <laughs> okay i'm gonna give you i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it out for you but oh cheese! Right. i love me some cheese mm. it's a delicious cheese that's been soaked in a syrah <laughs> whoa oh from my trader God. joe's shut up oh that's they really have the good. best mm, their green goddess cheese is really good Oh, I've never had that. See, we yeah, could just really talk good. about cheese. We or we could just do podcast. a whole thing about <laughs> cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's all you really need to know about us. Is we both love cheese, and we'll talk about it <laughs> ad nauseum. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Have a great yep, week. <laughs> thank you. Take care. No, oh, my God. I'm going to start pretty tame. Okay. Because, I mean, we're both Star Wars fans, and... I'm sure everyone out there has heard our how did we meet, how did we get into Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But my first question is, and I'm not sure you've answered this or at least not in a condensed form, is we know how you got started loving Star Wars and in getting into the fandom, you know, the whole realm of of Star Wars. Yeah. But tell us how you got started writing and then eventually writing fanfics because you write some of the best out there. And I think I'm not the only one that would say that. Oh, well, that's nice. Thanks. You You're mean just, just writing in general, how I guess? Well, started? I know you write in general, mm-hmm. and you've been working on stuff in the background for years, but when did you get started writing at all? And then when what started, what, what spawned you into writing fanfic? So I don't know. I was just like born writing. <laughs> there you go. She came out with a pen. I did. <laughs> and a little notepad and... <laughs> Started a story the minute I stepped on the planet. (laughs) Honestly, I've been writing stories as far back as I can remember. Like, some of my earliest memories were coming up with stories. Like, (laughs) to tell you the kind of child I am, in our elementary school, we had, I can't remember what it was called. Oh, Young Authors. It was like a writing competition every year, and I hated it. It was awful. Oh, (laughs) Because you'd have to write the story and draw the pictures to go with it, and then they would bind oh. it. And But one year, mine did place, and I ended up going to, like, the regional, because I wrote, I wrote a, do- uh, not a documentary, I wrote an autobiography about Martin Luther King Jr. Nice, nice. <laughs> Which, I was, like, six. What could I possibly have said? But, like, with well, the first... I'm not sure. <laughs> in kindergarten, my story was about... The Gulf War. <laughs> Holy shit, Lauren. Right. <laughs> See, I didn't I know. know any of this. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. But yes, I I started writing seriously, though. I had a dream in college. And it wait, was... wait, wait. Isn't that a Martin Luther King quote? <laughs> yes. 
I had a dream, but not in college. Right, but that went so perfectly together. Anyway. (laughs) I am not channeling Martin Luther King Jr. I love him, but he stands on his own. He Um, does. I just had a dream in college that was super real, like it felt real. Actually, all of my novels that I'm working on started as dreams, weirdly enough, like almost all of them, which is really strange. It was like a transmission from the universe, and I just had to start writing it, and I've been working on it ever since, and it has evolved, and college was 2007, (laughs) so. Oh. Yeah. Mine was, oh, when you graduated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I yes. was 2006. I was going to say, you didn't start in 2007. No. There's no way. Okay. No, you, yeah. No, I graduated in 2007, so that was a long time ago, and I've been writing it ever since, but um, I will finish it someday. I have a bunch yes. of other novels that I'm working on, too, but so f- fan fiction-wise, though, I actually started writing a Luke fan fiction right after Ooh. college. Uh, it will never be shared with anyone ever. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we all have those. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's gruesome, but, but it was, um, I still read it sometimes. It's in a notebook, like it's handwritten. Aww. And wow. it was, yeah, it's all about post Return of the Jedi. There was no Star Wars content, so I created my own yep. at that time. There was nothing else coming out in 2008. <laughs> Makes sense. Maybe Revenge of the Sith. I don't remember. I think that came out before that, though, like way before that. So, yeah. And now nice. just Obi Wan stuff because Clone Wars. Blame it all on Clone Wars. Blame it on the Clone Wars. <laughs> I I hear you there, though. Yeah. There's a lot of unresolved tension. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> no, we resolve all tensions. <laughs> yeah. That's the point of fanfic, right? Right? Yes. (laughs) All right. So this was kind of the food. It could be food related, but it does not need to be. How is it? It's like, are you pregnant or not? You either are. You are. Is it food or is it not? (laughs) Hear me out. (laughs) Okay. What is one of your guilty pleasures that you're willing to admit? Now, that could be a music, uh, like a band or Mm -hmm. an artist that you're just guilty this... pleasure or it's, or it's a cheat meal or a food or you know just a guilty pleasure a, a really bad movie you like you know something like that that's what oh, i was wanted to ask i actually wrote the same question for you <laughs> really oh i have my answer i already have my answer because okay, i'm yeah <laughs> um oh my god i have too many i deny myself nothing um <laughs> <laughs> well whatever you're willing to admit here today please share well, one guilty pleasure is that I actually really like Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. <laughs> well, I mean, it's right on par with our shirtless Cassian that we've gotten. Yeah. So Diego Luna, we, we can't get enough. <laughs> it's terrible, but he is adorable. And it it's like one of those movies where you know exactly what you're going to get. And it doesn't, yeah. doesn't rip your heart out completely. Right. And it came out when I was young. And yeah, that's definitely one. Like food wise, though, I have an anything that's like a British scone. I can't say no to it. So there you go. I shouldn't mm-hmm. eat them because they kind of make me sick. But I love them oh, too it's a much. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I mean... exactly. And I pay for it. <laughs> hey, it's good. It's good, right? Havana nights and a scone. That's a nice <laughs> night in. <laughs> it makes no sense together unless you're no. me. <laughs> <laughs> If you could go anywhere in the world tomorrow, no price, no qualms, nothing, nothing's holding you back. There's no work, nothing. Where would you go tomorrow? This is a, this is hard. Iceland. I'd go back really? to Iceland. Mm-hmm. You'd go back to Iceland. Yeah. There are things I want to nice. see. Again. That or the UK. Because I kind of like really have always wanted to do like a, like a super nerd tour of the UK where I go and see like Robin Hood and King Arthur locations. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you doing that. You'd be so into it. I want to go to Tintagel and I, yeah, I, <laughs> and Scotland. Like, so I'm torn between the two islands, you know. Yes. The UK or Iceland. Yeah, definitely. I love the light there. Yeah. It's, it's more north. So it looks like 
autumn all the time when you're taking yeah i know what you mean by yeah when i lived in alaska that was that was something yeah was very noticeable and i loved it you don't think it will be but it is just a a little Mm -hmm. bit more latitude north and it's quite different it's pretty if you and obi-wan went on a date (laughs) where would you want to go and what would you do (laughs) not a first date just any date any date (laughs) yes like if you only had one chance this was your chance can i pick your fanfic as my date (laughs) oh which one you know which one. Oh, the the resort <laughs> one yeah <laughs> the trash pile i love it though it's not Hot. a bad location no i'm all about the snow um my first thought was like a museum but i think he'd be too pedantic and like explaining everything the whole time <laughs> <laughs> well you could start at the museum yeah let him be obi-wan there and then take him somewhere <laughs> <laughs> where he opens up a little more <laughs> honestly i think like a walk in a garden or like nature to get him away from to like place him back in a natural environment so that would be nice some somewhere where like no one's watching so you can just like let your guard down and have fun and laugh and relax yeah that's yeah instead that's of in nice. a museum nature like a walk in a park or something. would he hold your hand Oh, I want to do the thing when my hand is under his arm. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Yes. <laughs> it's very gentlemanly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you'd find a lovely tree mm-hmm. to sit under. That sounds nice. And then when the sun goes down, you sneak into like a speakeasy and have cocktails in the back. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. He would be. <gasps> yes, he would go for a speakeasy, like a true one. Yeah. Not an imposter speakeasy, but like a real legit. Yeah. Where you can kind of go disappear and nobody looks at you too closely. You can just be a yeah. Jedi in the background. No one notices. And it's, <laughs> it's not like 2,000 levels down in Coruscant. You're just going to a nice speakeasy somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to the seedy bottom of some no. city planet. Although a dive bar is fun sometimes, but you can't go dressed in there like a Jedi. No. No, he shouldn't be dressed at all. <laughs> Wait, is this my date or yours? <laughs> Sorry. I, I was just going to say, as long as we don't go to that bar where a snake is the bartender, because then I yeah, no. sure as f- I'm not interested in that. No, but... I would I would walk in, see it, turn right around and leave. <laughs> just no, it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or just like. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> sounds real good. That sounds yeah, like a good that. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm going to be bouncing around. So, oh, know, that's great. Little I Star Wars it. here, little normal stuff, a little more Star Wars. <laughs> Keep me on my toes. <laughs> well, well, then we have the rapid fire guest questions we ask when we interview guests. Yeah, We're going an- to answer each other at the end. I love so, that. I think that's going to be fun. If you could go back and do it all again... What career would you choose and why? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> well, Lucas the kind of... No. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, I was... This is embarrassing. I was going to be an actor. <laughs> why is that embarrassing? Because everybody says that. Nobody makes it. You know, like it's... I, that's what I wanted to do. That was like all I cared about in high school. I was even our president of our thespian society like i lived for acting well i knew you were a thespian but i i didn't know that that was like something you really wanted to do yeah i like studied it in high school which is stupid because you're a child and what child is serious in high school but i was like super serious i even tried to start my own theater company (laughs) whoa (laughs) which makes sense knowing me i'm such an idea person but um definitely didn't do anything it was I even directed I did direct some plays in high school too which was fun but yeah I didn't have uh, uh, my teacher who was gonna help me with auditions got pregnant and she left and the other oh. acting teacher was an alcoholic <laughs> did oh god not this is give... wow <laughs> yeah she didn't give any f- at all and I did go on an audition but I didn't do the right kind of thing like I I think I picked like a monologue from a Neil Simon play, which I love Neil Simon. It's great. But like now as an adult, I would pick a man's monologue that's always done by a guy and I would do it. 
Like, yes. <gasps> that would be so good. Oh, my God. You should just do that <laughs> sometime for me. But anyway, because I want to see it. You'd be you'd nail it. Oh, my God. Like, I have the to be or not to be speech memorized at all times because I had to do it for something in high school. You but... know what's funny is that we had to memorize like a soliloquy or some kind of, you know, brief speech mm-hmm. in high school in my advanced literature class. And I chose one from Hamlet. Oh, did you? Yes. That's awesome. What did you pick? I can't remember. I used to remember it and I can't remember now, but I love Hamlet. So it's not surprising that you and I have that. (laughs) Yeah, right. I'm not surprised at all. Right? (laughs) It is. It's so good. It's my favorite play that's especially Shakespeare. I have other plays that I love that aren't Shakespearean, but like Mm -hmm. Hamlet is so difficult to perform well because no one's quite sure how to interpret it. Right. That's is why he I love really it. mad or is he yeah. acting mad? You know, it's yes. great. It's good. Yeah. So you that can would... go back and be an actress, yes? Yeah, yeah. I would love to do that. What kind of, this is, I didn't have this written down, but what kind of films would you gravitate towards? Oh, God, I don't know. I always, always got cast as the mom, which I fucking hated. The I was, mom? Yeah, because I was so mature for my age. I was always cast as the mother I would love to play villains. <laughs> Ooh. I think there that was a great evil Ooh. laugh there. Too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see this. I actually would love to see this. My sister got to play Madame Tenardier in Les Mis, and she was just such a bitch, and I loved it. I was so jealous. That's amazing. You know, uh, uh, my friend Derek has always said he loves the villains because they're more interesting they're more fun they have better costumes they yeah. they have better theme music like <laughs> honestly like sometimes they're more captivating than the hero like it's a greater ter- terrible movie great example in the patriot i don't know if you've ever yeah. seen that with mel Mm-mm. gibson no. the movie makes oh, me no. that movie makes me laugh out loud and it shouldn't like it's not funny okay. but i laugh out loud but jason isaacs plays the bad guy and he is brilliant and i love him in it and then he wow. played lucius malfoy and captain hook and it just all makes yeah. sense because yeah, yeah, yeah. Is... none of that <laughs> yeah yeah i think it'd be more fun to play the villain i do not disagree <laughs> maybe someday <laughs> so complete opposite of villain mm-hmm. let's talk about a hero our hero our favorite hero my question is with regards to Luke Skywalker, would you be a member of Luke's Jedi School if you could? Oh, yes, but I would be a very distracted student. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Oh my god, I, get it. I would be so like madly in love with him that I wouldn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so- I'd get killed right away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's looking at the way his hair is falling, wisp, wisp, <laughs> wispy piece of hair, and like she looking totally in a mirror. gets nailed by some other student's blaster, like exactly, or just like, getting <laughs> stabbed through the heart while <laughs> looking at Luke's Chanel boots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you could also work at the school and suggest other clothes for him. Mm. You could be like an advisor. That would be fun. You don't necessarily have to be a student. I, I didn't say student. Would you be a member of the school? Meaning yeah. you could advise Any... him to not wear Chanel boots. <laughs> or nothing at all. Or I nothing. Would... <laughs> wow, that's a... Well, you suggested that already. <laughs> well, I did, but I didn't... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Mark Hamill was fit as f*** in those movies. He really was, like, though. He really you was. You can't tell because he never shows it up. Well, yes, he does in Empire Strikes Back, but... Yeah, he was super fit. They had him doing, uh, he was doing like all different kinds of uh, sword fighting, weight lifting, and um, karate or something for those movies. But Well, you and I talked about starting our own Jedi training. Oh, man, that's still like, a facility. Goal. Like, it's just kind of like a mix of fencing and sword play, but like, you know, yeah. not going to kill each other with it, but with lightsabers or like fake lightsabers. Yes. We called it a nerd dojo. I still yes, think it's a that was good it. idea. The yeah. nerd dojo. And it, I have this dream that there'd be a corner at the front like that's full of comic books. <laughs> <gasps> 
Yes, like a little reading spot to prepare yes. or kill time before it's your session. Or <laughs> Exactly. You, you could just hang out there. I kind of love that. Oh, maybe someday we had have someday. enough money. I'm not losing I'm not losing hope to that idea. No. Anything I'm more just I'm more concerned about like getting sued by a Lucas. Well sure, um, but <laughs> Nerd Dojo doesn't necessarily Exactly pull the attention of anyone at Disney, so I think we're fine. <laughs> yes. So favorite fandom other than Star Wars? If you had to pick one. Hmm. Well, probably Batman. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, and like the timing is so sad because Kevin Conroy just died. Literally brought me to tears because he's so ingrained, you know, like he's yes, he's the Batman I grew up with. So Mm -hmm. um, even though Tim Burton stuff came out first, like my parents didn't let us watch that. And I did see the Saturday morning cartoons when my mom wasn't home. (laughs) Uh Oh, we're not supposed to watch cartoons as kids. And so she would have, she would like pick me up from school first. And while she was going to get my other sister at a different school, I would watch Batman for like five minutes while she was out of the house. And it was the greatest thing ever. Um, yeah, I still love Batman, the animated series. And I particularly love like Dick Grayson and Nightwing because. Oh, yeah. When I, I know you do. Yeah, I know you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Robin always seemed like such a doofus. In the <laughs> like the old sixties, Gee Willikers, Batman, but they've really redone his character. He's way more interesting. He has a much darker past now, and he has the that. same tragedy as Batman, but he turns out not so destroyed by it. In some versions, some version he is, but mm-hmm. yeah, I like that stuff a lot. It's it, and I like it because they're not superheroes; they're people with right. twisted. Backstories. Right. <laughs> yeah. Y- yes. Yes. Yeah. My favorite superheroes have twisted backstories. Yeah. We, we're we drawn to that for some reason, I guess. For but... some reason. If you could live in any past time period or era, what one would it be? I wrote I, the same question for you. Really? Oh, good. <laughs> because I love this question. That's so great. Um. <laughs> Good, I get to answer it too. Live in the time period? Like I actually live during this time period. You have to live through it. So the good and the bad. It. Yes. Ugh. No. But I mean, you can just focus on <laughs> now. <laughs> I like running water. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's take out mm, okay, let's take out the bad and and take me to a a glitzy part of the past that has nothing nothing wrong with it. There's no such thing. But <laughs> Well, this is a fantasy question and answer. So. Yeah, yeah, like Narnia. <laughs> but that does, that's not real, I guess. But I'm su- this is so f***ed up. No one wants to live during this time, but I'm super fascinated by the Dark Ages. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. If you could go back investigative or to put on a costume or whatever, yeah. like their daily wear, which would be a costume for us because yeah. we're not... We're not uh, actually living in it. We're safely revisiting a piece of the past. We'll label it as that. Yes. I, like, very specifically, I really like British history a lot. So the time period from when Rome left Britain, uh, before the Normans invaded, I find that's the Dark Ages pretty much in the UK. I love that time period because it was just crazy. Like, all these it different, was. like, Vikings invaded and the Angles invaded. And yes, there's still indigenous British heritage to this day, even though they've been invaded over and over and over. It's a really mm-hmm. fascinating thing. And mm-hmm. like that time period was like a mixture of pagan and Christian and like women had power and were losing power. So it's just a really fascinating dynamic time period that for a while as like a writer, you have some latitude there to kind of like bake things that seem a little bit more fantasy. But I'm also really really fascinated in late 18 early 1900s chicago yeah i would yeah. like to go there for a day and like wear the clothes yeah, just, and but i wouldn't yeah, want that's to very catch cool. typhus or dysentery or anything. Nah, nah, nah. We're, we're not talking about but like that, that was yeah. my great grandmother moved to chicago from rantoul illinois which is like out in the farm country 
And there's we have yeah. all these pictures of her wearing like the big hats, like the Gibson girl clothes. And oh wow! She was a daughter of the revolution and like wrote her congresswoman. Oh my gosh! That... I would just like to go and see what her life was like. They had amazing clothes. They really did. And there's this the hair. And the everything. hair is my hair. Like it's a, my hair when it's long has to be piled on the top of my head, just like a Gibson girl. But mm-hmm. there's this great photo of her sitting on her front porch. And my great grandfather. It's so hot out that they have their shoes and socks off. And my great grandfather has to hold up a cloth to cover their ankles because it wasn't appropriate to have a photograph of their ankles oh. showing. Oh, God. Yeah, I forgot those things exist. Yeah. Those rules. No elbows, no ankles. How strange. How sexy. <laughs> how strange and how far we've come. I know. <laughs> now I basically see girls' a holes literally on the train and stuff. Yeah, it's like if those people could see TikTok right now, like, what would they think? Oh, my God. (laughs) They basically assume we're all going to hell. (laughs) We're all terrible heathens. Yeah, and, like, I wouldn't want to... Maybe we are. I guess. we're. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live during that time period because the constrictions would drive me insane. But I I do find it. The lack of rights would be a struggle. Yes. This is fun, and I don't know if I know the answer to this. What is your favorite book or not or novel? Oh, I have I have two. Okay. I read of Mice and Men in eighth grade, and it changed me forever. Really? See, I didn't know that. It was the first book we ever read that didn't have a happy ending. Right. And it had swears. <laughs> it had swears. It did. And I was in eighth grade. I was like, I can't believe we're reading this book full of the word bastard and so. yeah 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 it was a big time it was the big time (laughs) graduated into adult literature um but i didn't think i liked reading until i read that and then i was like oh books could be really good nice and then the movie that went with it that gary sinise made is perfection Mm -hmm. highly recommend it It Mm is one of the most true adaptations i've seen of a book to a film and then my other one is the um the handmaid's tale is that right Really? My brain is like, is that the title? Even though I've read it a bunch of times. <laughs> now I'm second guessing myself. Yeah, the Margaret Atwood. Basically, almost anything Margaret Atwood writes, I can't put down. It's so good. But that book is, is f- brilliant. It's so good. An honorable mention, Delicate Edible Birds, is a collection of short stories by Lauren Groff. She is also a brilliant writer. She's a contemporary writer. And the way she writes about women, internal struggle, women's rage, things like that. It's subtle and yeah. sometimes not so subtle. It is brilliant. I love her writing. Her and Margaret Atwood are my queens. Well, I, have, I don't know anything about those stories. So I need to, the, that series. What was it called? Delicate Edible Birds. Okay. I need to research that. That sounds up my alley. One of them is based off a longer novel, which I didn't actually like. But I was just talking to somebody about this. Maybe it was you even with Tales of the Jedi, how people who write long form sometimes aren't good at short form. Lauren Groff is one of those writers who is excellent either as a super long novel or a tiny short story. She is just like a cold blade cutting right to it. Like, it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I need to look this up. I'm going to read yeah, those. the short stories is worth it. It's a little bit, some of it's a little upsetting, but being a woman is upsetting sometimes, so. <laughs> yes, it is. It is, actually. Yeah. So, hmm. okay. One more easy one, and then we'll get to the <laughs> rapid fire. Because okay. we have approached the 30-minute mark. <laughs> this is pretty easy. Favorite season and why? No, you probably know this. <laughs> I do, but maybe some others don't. I am an autumn girl and winter. I do like winter too. But when the fall rolls around and the weather gets cold, I come alive. Like I feel like a different human being. Same. It's the colors, but it's also the temperature. I thrive in colder temperatures. I do not do well in Mm -hmm. the heat and the lack of humidity. (laughs) Even Mm -hmm. if it rains, it's still not that humid (laughs) because it's so cold. The lack of bugs. Yes. I don't snakes, like bugs and snakes. Spiders. Yes, and all those things. <laughs> I saw a video once of a white python 
that someone kept as a, uh, as a pet and it like learned how to open somebody's front door and the caption was this is why I live in places where the weather gets cold enough that it hurts my face <laughs> yes like, yes no offense to the snakes I, I am here to uh, honor and respect their place on this planet yes. they do a lot of good but I don't like looking they at them they serve a purpose but Sorry. I do, they do I actually think I have a phobia because I almost faint and vomit when I see them Ooh. Especially in person. Oh yeah, I can't even, honestly, I can't even watch a video of them. They actually make me ill. Well, it's interesting how, like, the movement of some creatures, like, to me, spiders, sends me over yeah. the edge. I can't look it's... at them. It's like some ingrained caveman yes. thing. Yes, it's like the way it... Like, stay away. Yes. So, in the autumn, I feel safe to go outside. <laughs> and, like, same in the winter. I'll I'll walk through like a dense grove of trees in the winter where I will not even get close to it in the summer because we also have really bad ticks here. So I Yes, yeah. yeah. I grew up in an area with bad ticks. Yeah, they've gotten and they're bad. They've gotten really bad here in the last couple of years. You cannot yeah. even go in your yard without getting them on your pant legs. So Yep, that's that's But yep. the colors sounds like familiar. The, I know. The trees look like I don't know. It's just amazing out here. We have a lot of deciduous trees, so we're lucky. <laughs> that turn colors. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful shades. I can't I can't agree more. I'm a winter girl, but fall is second. Very, very close. Yeah, second, I mean like so. winter is You and I are the same. Yeah, winter is my cl- I love walking in the snow. I have like a big parka. I love the snow and yes. yeah. If it's sweater weather, we're there. Yes. Yeah. If I can have a sweater, a tea, and a fire in the fireplace, that's my heaven on oh earth. Oh, my God. That sounds so good right now. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the next section? Because we're going to go quick. This is rapid yes. fire. I can't wait. Yep. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Number one. What character would you marry or what? who do you have a crush on? Star Wars. I would... Mary Luke Skywalker, he is marrying material. Yes. And I have a crush on Obi-Wan. He is not marrying material. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Well, and I have to say, I would marry, well, I wouldn't marry Cassian Andor, but I would definitely, I have a crush on him. He's also damaged good, so. <laughs> They're all damaged in I Star know. Wars, just to varying but degrees. But Luke is the most, like, <laughs> optimistic of the the destroyed he would be a good he would be a good partner yeah. a life partner yeah. yes all right are you a jedi or a sith a jedi which version of obi-wan do you like best prequels clone wars original trilogy or now we can add the kenobi series to True. this um always clone wars i love just james Earl yeah. taylor just <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and that hair yes he's and those eyes. I'll never forget one of my sisters being like, why am I more attracted to the cartoon than I am to you and right? McGregor? And I was like, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> okay. All right. What's your fi- next question is what's your favorite Obi-Wan hair? Padawan, BG mullet, Clone Wars, <laughs> Kenobi series. It's got to be the Clone Wars with the li- little piece of hair that moves. The little piece of dangly hair. In the exactly. Of- what, was yes. that season three or something that that started up on? Yeah. Well, any any time he gets punched in the face, <laughs> so that could be any season. <laughs> it's true. It's all the time. <laughs> all right. If you could wear one costume from all of Star Wars, all of Star Wars, which would it be? Oh, man. I know I this wrote these thing. questions, but that's a hard one. Um, I don't know how I'm going to answer any of these. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, like, I have different kinds of answers. Like, I'd definitely love to be in a TIE, tie fighter outfit someday, like, with the big black like, helmet and everything. Yeah. But mm. I also, like, I love Jin's costume. Jin's a f***ing b- I totally get that. But then I have another girly side. I'd love to f***ing wear one of Satine has a specific gown where she has, like, a headdress off to the side that she reminds me of David Bowie when she wears it, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. It's not her usual outfit. It's like something she wears when Padme comes to visit. So, like, I have a couple different ways I would go. Or Hoth Leia. Hoth Leia is above and beyond anything. Honestly, and even Clad City Leia. Oh, I God, love yeah. love those looks. I love yep. how Carrie Fisher looks in those movies. Ugh. 
Sorry, I know that's not rapid fire. <laughs> That this is this is our show. We can do it as rapidly or as slowly as we want. <laughs> All right. Original trilogy, prequel trilogy, sequel trilogy, or animated show? Hmm. I mean, I grew up with the original trilogy. That's what made me love mm-hmm. Star Wars with a passion. But Clone Wars is also like a huge deal mm-hmm. for me. So it's kind of like a tie. It depends on what mood I'm in. If you could be any character in all of Star Wars, who would it be? I don't even know how to answer this one. I think I do, but it's really, it's a lot harder. It's harder than you think if, because you have to accept your fate. Yes. (laughs) Like, I really felt like Luke when I was a kid. I feel like, like if we take out the sequel trilogy, Luke, definitely Luke. But I also am very (laughs) Qui-Gon. Well, if you could be any character, not if you were. Yeah. If you could be. Then Luke. Yeah, he's just Luke? got a great arc. That's great. That's a good answer. Yeah. It's not C-3PO, so you're you're good. <laughs> I would have to punch myself in the face if I exactly. was C-3PO. <laughs> I have to tell myself to shut up all the time. <laughs> and finally... Mm. What special powers would you want to have? Oh, I'd like to Jedi mind trick people. Yeah. (laughs) Just stop talking to me. Like (laughs) she's doing the hand motion. Yeah, yeah, I know. You can't see. Like not you, Leanne. (laughs) Stop talking to me. Just like to to, like trick people to stop bothering me and send them away. (laughs) That's a that's a fair use of that superpower. Honest to God, I wouldn't hurt anybody with it. I just want my peace and quiet. Like people always come up and talk to me in public. Like they, I, like I was standing in line to pay my water bill once in Flagstaff, Arizona, and the woman in front of me turned around and literally just started launching into her life story. And I would have loved to Jedi mind trick my way out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel you. <laughs> I do. And that is it. That was fun. <laughs> Get to know Lauren. 40 minutes of getting to know Lauren, your host <laughs> of Most Things time. Kenobi. Did I pick some good questions? You did. I, I, lo- I knew we were going to have some overlap. How funny is that, that we have I know, right? the same ones? All right. Our question for you is, what is your question for Lauren? <laughs> if you could ask her one thing to get to know her, you know, within reason here, uh, <laughs> what would you ask her? She has agreed to pick one, possibly two, questions of yours and answer on social media in some format, some media format. Yeah. But answer, you know, chime in on our Twitter and Instagram for sure and let us know what your question is for Lauren and she will choose at least one to, to respond to. <laughs> I reserve the right to refuse to answer anything I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Our our listeners always come up with the greatest questions they're always either they really do though they're either brilliant or f-ing hilarious so i'm exactly I'm so bring it yeah bring it listeners <laughs> so come back next week where i interview leanne i'm really excited we did have some overlapping questions so should i still ask you those or do you want me to come up oh, with sure new ones? okay i will definitely forget by the time you ask me <laughs> okay. so no problem <laughs> well <laughs> We'll do the same format where I interview her, and I'm I'm really excited. It's been fun coming up with the questions for this, so I think it should be a good time. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, well, I'm not ready, <laughs> but I'm ready to be not ready, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. We appreciate every single one of our patrons and are grateful for your support. If you would like to support the podcast and become a patron as well, head over to the Most Things Kenobi Patreon. And you can always follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. If you enjoy our podcast, please feel free to rate us on Spotify and Apple. And if you just need one place to find all of these, head over to mostthingskenobi.com. So until next time, my space twin, may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>